If you're watching this video, you probably have a favorite brand of spinnerbait. For me, that's War Eagle. So I decided to try to figure out how to make my own spinnerbaits that looked really, really close to War Eagle spinnerbaits. So in today's video, I want to share with you what I learned in the process of making these spinnerbaits and give you a few pointers to hopefully eliminate some of your headaches. So let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. If you haven't already done so, make sure you check out my TikTok. I have a lot of one minute fishing tips and one minute recipes that I think are pretty good. And also check out my Instagram for updates and some photography stuff. So let's talk about how to make this. Damn, that thing is nice. So once you have your spinnerbait jig head, I like to put it in a vise and kind of tip it backwards so the materials slide on real nice. And the first material that you're gonna need is a spinnerbait clevis, and you're gonna want to use a size three. This is the clevis that's going to hold your first blade, the smaller blade. And when you put this blade on, you wanna make sure that the round side is facing the jig head. I'll slide that on, and that is step one. The next material that we're gonna need is a four millimeter bead. These beads come in silver or gold. Those are the two primary colors that I use. And when I put them on my spinnerbait jig head, I like to use hackle pliers, just because it's really hard to do it with your bare hands. You could also use a fly tying bodkin to slide them on. But now I have my spinnerbait blade and my bead on. To create some space on this metal bar, you're gonna to need to use either chafe tubing, which I got at Bass Pro Shops. It's kind of a more rigid tubing, but it is very accessible if you wanna start doing this like tomorrow. And then I also use this 1 16th inch plastic tubing that I ordered online. I'll put the link for all these materials in the description below. So you're gonna to wanna to cut a little piece of either of those types of tubing, less than an inch long, probably like three quarters of an inch long and slide that on your bar, followed by a second bead. And then you're going to need round nose pliers. You really need these pliers to bend this bar in the appropriate way so it's nice and round. It doesn't look right with other pliers. So just go ahead and bend that around so it is closed off. And then I'm just going to straighten it out with my fishing pliers to make sure that it's not sticking out anywhere. Now that I have my loop, the next material that we're going to need is a ball bearing swivel, which is going to hold our back larger blade. And one thing I'll say, is make sure you quality control these ball bearing swivels. This pile is actually ones that didn't spin for me, so I go through and I spin them, and if they grind at all, I set them aside. Then I'm just gonna use my split ring pliers to put that ball bearing swivel on that loop that we bended with our round nose pliers. And then the body of our spinnerbait is pretty much done. So it already looks pretty good. Just make sure that it's straight, make sure that everything is lined up nice so it spins in the water nicely. Now it's time to put our skirt on, and obviously there's a lot of different types of skirts. This is kind of where the spinnerbait takes life, if you will. You can be very creative with this process, and it's a lot of fun. So for this spinnerbait, I'm going to use white, which seems to be the most popular. I found that three to three and a half skirts works best. And in order to make a skirt, you're going to need these skirt collars. They come in a bunch of different colors. White, here's tan, black. And the black and tan ones also have space to add rattles to them. So another thing that's coming down on the line, but chance for you to customize your spinner baits. You're also gonna need this skirt making tool. People make these online out of like old ink pens, but this is $7 and I think it's worth the investment. So I'm gonna start by putting my skirt collars on my skirt tool kind of a tedious process but I would recommend putting several skirt colors on before you start making skirts I'm gonna put three on for this video but three to five is probably what I would do just so you can make several skirts and once your skirt collars are on your tool you're gonna slide the skirt hanger through the tool and then you're just gonna hang your skirts on the tool and for this skirt I'm going to do a white and then a glitter and then another white and I feel like that combination works pretty well. So once they are on my hanger, I'm going to just pull them up inside the tool and there's measurements on the tool and I found that stopping the skirts at the 20 on the side of the tool gets them the best length. And what you want is one half of the skirt to be a little bit longer than the other half. This is gonna get you that War Eagle skirt appearance where it has kind of like a tapered tail on the spinnerbait. You'll see when it's done. So 
So after that, you can cut the ends of the skirt before you put it on your spinnerbait if you want. I just, for this video, didn't. Doesn't matter. Either way is fine. But just put it on your jig head and then separate the skirts by just cutting the ends off with scissors and make sure all the silicone strands are nice and spread out. And then that is it. That's a spinnerbait, guys, and that's a good looking spinnerbait. Here's another little trick that I do if I'm making multiple spinnerbaits. I'll make little stacks of my skirts like this. So this is the exact same skirt pattern that I just showed you. Then I can just go through with my skirt tool and, and hang it and put the collar on. Hang it, put the collar on. It makes the process faster. So that's it guys, you can see my skirt here has that tapered look like War Eagle. This process kinda takes some time in gathering materials, but it offers a lot of customization. So try it yourself, leave a comment, and let me know how it goes.